Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Today we are working on another envelope project to bust through our envelope stash. This is a redo of another video I did a while back. I will give you a link to that video below, but I am redoing the tutorial now to show you how these are A2 envelopes, which means they hold a four and a quarter by five and a half card. You need four matching envelopes and they do need to be horizontally oriented. The ones that are have the flap at a short top won't work for you. So what you would do is measure the width of your card and then cut a square of cardstock that is one eighth inch shorter. So, or cut it exactly a square this width, but then just trim two sides down. So I am using Fairy Dust Collection by Graphic 45 and I have used it before and really, really enjoyed making the uh, journal that I made with it. So what we're going to do is take the flaps and we're going to turn all four of them around like this, one flap on each side, and you need to orient it so that the color you want on the outside of your card is on the back, so upside down. Then we're just going to glue all these flaps on. And you'll want to center this. I'm looking at the back side. You want to center that because it's not perfect. Remember we said it's like an eighth of an inch smaller. We're going to open that up, get the next envelope, and glue all four of those around. And last one. And then we need another one of those mats, the exact same size as this one. And we're going to glue that on the inside, correct side up. Now I want to mat, you need to figure out if you have an orientation for your card. I like to fold these two in and then this one and then this one is how I like to do mine. So as you're cutting the mats for this, you need to orient your papers. So for instance, you need, if you're matting this, you need to have the paper going this way. I'm going to mat all of these first, and I've measured mine, and I need two and, two and seven eighths by five and a half. And so I have these ones that are vertical, these ones that are horizontal. There's a little fairy in there. Now this also works with envelopes that do not have the square flap, but it also means that this part of the envelope here is not flat across. It's at an angle, especially if you make your own envelopes, they are usually angled in. So it just means that your mat is going to be shaped a little differently. And if you want to distress your edges, do that before you put these down. We're doing a real, I just want to show you how quick this can be. It's really not that much work compared to making your regular card. Now, as these come in, um, like I said, these are A2 envelopes. So it means an A2 size card is going to fit in the pocket. So you can either make cards or, you, or put photos or journaling cards in here or whatever. But you see they fit in there perfectly. But that's also the same size that's going to be the mat here. I trim mine down a little bit so it's a little smaller than A2. Now these ones, same thing. I have these folded here, these cut. Uh, let's see, make sure I've got those aiming the right way. Now, before you glue this panel on, you need to just lay it there and see if you like the look. You know, I could turn it this way. It gives an entirely different look to the card. So it's kind of more interesting than just putting, putting it there and seeing more of the same. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Now, I did a different closure on my last one. 
So this time I think what I'm going to do is to put an eyelet over here and then do a ribbon wrap. But that also means because of the eyelet that this pocket will be a little shorter, but that's still okay. So let's mark the middle here. This is a great ruler if you have issues with um, if you have issues with doing eighths and marking sixteenths, this is the the thing for you. Let's do the small size, which is the one eighth inch. If you are really bad at eyelets, make sure you look at the links down below because I'm going to give you a video on how to set perfect eyelets. Okay, so we just need to choose a color, but I'm going to flip it over and look at the front and see what color is going to go well. I think I will go with one of the greens because it's in a green spot right there. And my eyelet setter already happens to be set for this size of eyelet. There we go. And then all you have to do now is just to stuff it, uh, embellish it, and put your closure on that. So let's pull out my papers again. I have all of these wonderful papers left over from when I did that project. So this is a pocket. Now this is side to side oriented, so that could go there. I'm embellishing flat because it won't shut right or lay flat otherwise if I don't do flat. And don't forget you can do something right here, but this could also be your journaling spot for writing a note to the person who's receiving this. Oh, I love this. So, and you've got all these pockets that you can put in these cards. Like I said, you can also put photos, you can put gift cards in there. That's so pretty. Fairy magic. Now you see how this is the same width as this uh, mat here. So if I want it to see the mat around it, I will probably just come in and trim this off around that. And then that fits better. Oh, the back was great too. The back is a postcard. Graphic 45 papers are so delicious. I want to put this at the top because I want to see this fairy down here and I want to see it says fairy wings. These are some things that I laminated last time. I laminated some of the elements from the kit. Oh, so pretty pixie sprites. Another thing you could do would be to put this down here as a pocket. So I think I'll do that. Oh, but I love this. Isn't this fabulous? I'm going to have to do it this way. So now we have this pocket. And we can put other cards right in there. Magical things. Aren't you so beautiful? I just love this set. Okay, and we have this cute little leave room in your garden for the fairies to dance. So pretty. These ones are all too big for it. As you can see, they would, your card wouldn't be able to fold. So these are for a bigger project, like a such as a uh, big journal. But then we also have some of these cut-aparts and punch-outs. And these are pot. This is a pocket here, for instance. Now, I don't believe that it's too easy to get the, the Fairy Dust collection from Graphic 45 now, but they do have another fairy collection that's just as cute. So, And a lot of it looks pretty much the same. So now we have this little pocket, and although, you know, it's still flat enough, it's not super flat, but it's flat enough. And it could even stick up from one of these pockets, because you can still reach in behind it. I think I will put this here. Again, I want to see the word pixie at the bottom there. Now let's see if this fits in here, and it does, that's perfect. Okay, these are so beautiful that I don't know if I want anything on those panels, but we shall see. 
Another thing you could do would be just put a cute little strip across there. We could do that. I think it's getting lost that you really can't see how beautiful that is. It needs something more solid under it. It's so pretty though. I do love it. Okay, we have all these little pieces. Believe in Fairies is another good one that's going to go in a pocket. Actually, see if that's too, that's not too tall, too short. Oh, I know, this one's beautiful. So if you have uh, any paper collection with a bunch of ephemera, you're going to love doing this because this lends well to putting ephemera in pockets. It's just perfect. Okay, let's put this one up here. I don't know if that really shows though. It's not going to show too well. So what I might do is put that on a card or just put, I know I have this, which is the um, six inch pad and I had cards that I had been cutting up. Let's see if that fits and it does beautifully. Okay, so there's something in every pocket so far. So if we close these, I'm going to put this down because I think that was pretty on top. So if I put anything here, I don't want it sticking out the bottom unless that's intentional, unless that's really what I want. What about that little strip that I have here? I think that would work right there or right here. Let's I think I might trim this down just a bit. It's at an inch right now, but if I did it at three quarters, I think it would be better. Let's see, because then you can still see the fairies. You still see that border. This comes in, and again, when you decorate this, you have to make sure that if anything is showing, you might not want it covering right here. So this would be good for a strip right there. Um, or a small card like that. See, I, it's still, you can't see it. It's pretty cool. Let's do that. Now this is getting full because we do have a lot of actual cards and papers, but it's not as thick as it would be if we had all of the uh, thicker em embellishments in there. So I do want something on the front, and I could go a little thicker on the front if I want. Even though I'm going to have a ribbon, it would have to go around a thick embellishment. So that's something to keep in mind as you're putting these together. Do I like this one or do I like this one? I think this one, I think this one shows up better. Now let's find something to mat that on. Let's see, would this be okay? It's too too bold. I think I just need a solid color behind that. Sometimes you just don't discount black because black really makes things pop. You see how that changes everything? I think that's what I'm going to go with, but just a really tiny border on that. So I'm going to use the layering guide. What you do is you glue this in place first. One of the things I love about the layering guides is even if I didn't cut this at perfect right angles, I'm still matching the mat to this instead of cutting two separate pieces and hope they match. I'm going to use the 1 16th ruler. There's a lip on there. You catch that on your card, which is this card. Hold it down and trim the mat and it gives you a beautiful edge exactly the size that you are wanting all the way around. And now that really separates itself. It was getting lost in all the busyness of this. I am going to use foam tape on this and I like to use the foam tape sometimes because I get a solid coverage there and because since I'm going to have a wrap uh, ribbon around here or some kind of wrap closure, um, this is going to be under that ribbon. And so this way it's nice and firm and I'm not worried about it coming undone. 
So now we need to find something to wrap around that. I'd like to use Organza Ribbon with Fairy Projects because it has a more ethereal look. And these are the narrowest ones I have. The most narrow is this black. And I would have to just kind of pull some out and lay it across here and see if I didn't think that was too excessive, too bold. Probably not. It does bring in some of the black here and I think it's a good sharp contrast to all the colors here. So I really think that is an option. This is a soft lavender, but I think it's so soft that it's just going to look like an off-white on these bold colors, and it's not going to stand up on its own. See, it just kind of gets lost there. I think the turquoise would probably hold up better than that lavender. That's pretty, but I'm not a big fan of it against this uh, peach and orange. And then, of course, we have something like this. It's more of a champagne color, and I think I'm just going to go really weird here and go for the black. I think I like that. Okay, all this set aside. So I'm folding it in half, and I'm just kind of measuring around. I think I need another bit there. That's actually probably a good measurement right there. I'm going to make it a little longer, and then really fold it in half. I was guessing before. If you can't get it through, use the dental floss trick. Okay, so wrap that around and just tuck it under. Now, you still could use a charm with this. You still could put other embellishments. You could use um, some of the sparklies. You could put, uh, you could glitter up because the fairies really lend themselves well to glitter. Just saying that. And I have some of these super sparkly gemstones here from Pink Fresh. I still have some in my shop and I have more on order, but they are on back order at the present time. And I like to use Gem Tech on that. Now see, there's a little sparkly symbol here and there. I'm just going to give it a little extra nudge with the sparkle. And these come in different sizes. So um, if you dump some out, you can see that they're all different. Just like that. But I'm thinking that I want some more elsewhere as well. So I put three different sizes down here. I got a little extra. If you get a little extra glue, just pick that up. It will dry clear and you won't see it. Now, another thing you could do if you wanted would be to tie this off the end here in a knot and you could actually put a charm on the very end if you wished as well. But tying the knot there really helps as far as wrapping this and tucking it in. I'll show you those gemstones there. Lovely. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope that really inspires you to get out your envelopes and make cards. So this would still, you could still mail this in a mailing envelope, but you would have to do non-machinable. In other words, you can't just put one stamp on it and think that that's going to ship. You're going to have to make sure that you add on extra postage because it won't go through the machines at the post office. Also, I'm giving you a link down below to my entire playlist of envelope videos that you can follow along and see what else you can do to make your own envelopes or what to do with envelopes that you can repurpose.